Recently, Andre Karpathy made a post about his experience with Cloud Code and another one about how he felt behind all agentic tools that brings so much productivity. And given that the underlying engine for these is LLMs, they just seem to be getting better and better every year. At the same time, we also have guys like Jan Lacun, the former chief scientist of AI at Meta, who has been saying that LLMs inherently can't actually understand like humans do. And we need to invest in different AI models other than LLMs. So which is it? Are we really betting on the wrong horse by heavily investing into LLMs? Today, we're going to look at large language models, its progressions, its inherent flaws, and its impacts. And all this to try to frame the discussion around the limitations of LLMs. Welcome to Caleb Wright's code where every second counts. A common argument goes something like this. LLMs by and large are merely a machine that makes next token prediction in a probabilistic way. So the architecture doesn't actually have an internal mechanism to actually learn, but it's really just a tool that performs autocomplete. Let's go back to the 1950s. AI hype back then is actually not that different from what we're seeing today. This is a New York Times article from 1958 claiming that Frank Rosenblatt will be able to build a thinking machine with enough investment. And eventually, it can walk, talk, see, write, and reproduce itself. Claims like these are not unfamiliar to us today when we look at figures like Sam Altman saying that AGI could be achieved by 2030. So how does Perceptron in 1957 differ from LLMs in 2018 and onwards? Perceptron was a single layer network that connected inputs and outputs and adjusted its learning to classify a 20 by 20 image. And Frank Rosenblatt said that Perceptrons may come to possess knowledge of the physical world in which they exist. And they ended up getting a huge funding from the US Navy in the total amount of around $271,000, which in today's money adjusted is around $3 million. LLMs, on the other hand, easily get hundreds of billions of dollars of investments from venture capitals, private equity, and also from Magnificent Seven's capital expenditures. And unlike a physical machine like Perceptron that process 20 by 20 images, LLMs processes an input prompt from users in text and generates an output token accordingly. But Perceptron had an inherent flaw. This flaw was formally identified about 12 years after, so going from 1957 when Perceptron was first introduced to around 1969 when Marvin Minsky's book that formally identified how a single layer Perceptron could not solve the XOR problem since it only separated linearly. To put it simpler, if the input required separating the correct answer beyond a simple line, a single layer Perceptron wasn't able to actually learn the rule. And this sounds like a trivial and somewhat abstract thing. It was a big flaw, especially since the use cases were heavily expected for US military. And while multi-layer Perceptron could actually overcome these limitations, learning mechanisms like backpropagation didn't exist yet. LLMs are also not without flaws either. They hallucinate all the time because they are autoregressive by nature. What this means is that they're designed to always produce a plausible answer, even if the answer isn't knowable. And hallucinations like this exist, so we have to explicitly train the model to say, I don't know, instead of trying its best to answer the question. And as much as hallucination seems to be improving year after year, it will always sort of be a feature and a bug of LLM, since autoregression will always eagerly try to finish your prompt based on the highest probability of the next token, one after another, like it's designed to be. For this reason, we always have to check the answers from LLMs. Another flaw of LLM is that it inherently doesn't actually understand or learn. And more importantly, the LLM doesn't inherently know what is a fact and what isn't. Currently, we employ various techniques in post-training and we also use credible pre-training data to maximize the model's ability to actually discern what is and isn't factual. But personally, saying that LLMs don't actually learn is a weak argument and frankly, a discussion not worthwhile to have and here's why. Whether LLMs meet the philosophical definition of what learning or even what intelligence is, 
they start to matter far less at the point that LLMs are actually very useful and create so much value in the real world. Since Asians have become a dominant force in around 2024, noted by the rise of AI coding agents, and now few benchmarks are actually trying to capture the inherent value of LLMs more closely. For example, Meter and GDP Val, where both are trying to measure by the tasks that LLMs can perform. Meter measures the LLM's probability of success for tasks that take different lengths in time, and GDP Val measures the economical value of the LLM across various occupations and its tasks. Recently, Opus 4.5 achieved a 50% time horizon of 4 hours and 49 minutes. To clarify a common misunderstanding of this benchmark, this is measuring the depth of the task, not the speed. In other words, it's not saying that Opus 4.5 worked for 4 hours and 49 minutes to finish the task, but it's measuring the LLM's raw capability to successfully finish a task that human experts would take at various lengths. Now, both these benchmarks, while useful as a litmus test to see where LLMs currently are, they are parts of the sum, not some of the parts. In other words, benchmarks like these should be understood that jobs are more than a collection of individual tasks put together. Okay, so where does all of this put us? As the industry currently stands, AI purists like Jan Lacoon are pursuing other methods than LLMs because he sees a clear limitations in LLMs in understanding truths about the world. And to that, Adam Brown contested Jan's claims by asking him what task it is that LLMs can't exactly do. In other words, if LLMs are so limited, why is it that it's able to create so much value? And what are some things that LLMs actually can't do currently? Jan's answer to that question was that LLMs can't load the dishwasher and unload them. Now, at this point, you might be at different sides of the camp when it comes to LLMs. So let me raise this question. Does it really matter if LLMs actually learns or understands facts if the output that we get from LLM is good enough to operate in the real world? I mean, the value gain from LLMs and the downstream agents that's being created is already so huge. So at what point does learning and understanding in a philosophical sense really start to matter that impacts the output in the real world? So just because LLMs don't natively use five senses like humans, does that really create a huge blind spot in LLMs since language doesn't contain truths about physics and motion, but rather language is just an abstraction that describes the physical world? Regardless of the case, the majority of funding has been going towards LLMs. And limitations of LLM seems to be more theoretical still than practical. And from my perspective, use cases for LLMs are just too large for us to not invest our time and effort into it. While we should still try to pursue other AI architectures like the world models that try to grapple with the physical world. And even at the point that LLMs do hit their limit in terms of their raw capabilities, what agents can do and what we can teach LLMs in fine tuning just has too much value to overlook. What do you think?